Today is Tuesday, August 27th. We're talking about how the presidential candidates are pitching themselves to service members and veterans and why the presidential debate is now in question. Also, a recent arrest is reigniting the debate over free speech on social media. Plus, tech giants are now looking underground for new energy solutions. America's national parks received a record-breaking gift. And one Major League Baseball catcher played for both teams in the same game. We'll explain those stories and more news to know next. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. The 2024 presidential candidates are getting into even more sensitive issues. Former President Donald Trump spoke to U.S. troops yesterday, the day that marked three years since a suicide bombing at an Afghanistan airport as the U.S. was leading an evacuation effort. Thirteen American service members died, along with about 170 Afghans. Well, Trump blamed the Biden administration. He accused President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris of overseeing what he called the most embarrassing day in the history of our country— Both Trump and Harris have been competing for the advantage on military issues. Neither Trump nor Harris served in the military themselves, but they both have high-profile veterans who vouch for them, including their running mates. Meanwhile, Vice President Harris received some unlikely support this week from hundreds of Republicans, a retired four-star general, and more than 200 former GOP staffers endorsed Harris for president this week. They all previously worked under former President George W. Bush, Senator Mitt Romney, or the late Senator John McCain. In a letter, they acknowledge some ideological differences with Harris, but they say the alternative, another four years under Trump, would be chaotic and harmful to the American people. Harris isn't the only one getting some support from across the aisle. Former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, who ran for president as a Democrat, endorsed Trump this week. Gabbard praised Trump for, quote, having the courage to meet with adversaries, dictators, allies and partners alike in the pursuit of peace. The next big defining moment in the presidential race was expected to be next month's debate between Trump and Harris— But it seems that's now in doubt. Trump said yesterday he was still thinking about whether he should participate. And the Harris campaign announced it's pushing for the agreed upon rules to be changed so both microphones can stay on the whole time and will not be muted when the other person is speaking. So we'll see what gets decided. For now, the debate is still on the schedule for September 10th on ABC News. A group of lawmakers left the nation's capital this week to see the spot where a gunman tried to assassinate former President Trump. The members of a bipartisan task force toured the area in Butler, Pennsylvania, and met with local law enforcement officials. As you know, the gunman was able to fire several times, killing a person in the crowd and hurting others, including Trump himself, before Secret Service sharpshooters took him out. Since then, five agents who worked that rally were reassigned and are now working from home. The U.S. Secret Service also says it's cooperating with the congressional investigation. So is the Homeland Security Department and the FBI. Now, this has been a major bipartisan effort. The U.S. House unanimously established this task force, and the seven Republicans and six Democrats who make it up were picked by House Speaker Mike Johnson, a Republican, and House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, a Democrat. The main goal is to prevent future incidents like this and to hold people accountable for any possible failures. By the way, there are five conservative lawmakers who were not appointed to that panel who say they're going to lead their own investigation. They won't have the same subpoena power, though, so they'll have to rely on public information and potential whistleblowers. To be continued. More than half of Ukraine was targeted in what's now being called the most massive attack of the war so far. Russia fired up hundreds of missiles and drones over 15 different regions of the country. At least seven people were killed and energy facilities were damaged. Both power and water supplies have been impacted. Here in the U.S., President Biden said he would send energy equipment to Ukraine to repair its systems as soon as possible. But Ukrainian officials want more. They're asking allies for long-range weapons and permission to use them on targets inside Russia. Already, Ukrainian troops have been advancing into Russian territory, while Russian forces are moving forward in eastern Ukraine. A disaster has been declared in a popular tourism spot in southeast Alaska. A landslide cut down a hillside in Ketchikan, which is a common stop for cruise ships. It leveled homes and businesses, killing one person and hurting at least three others. More people who live nearby have evacuated since at last check the slope was still considered unstable. Landslides are often unpredictable, but this one happened after a weekend bout of rain and windy conditions. Experts from the National Weather Service are headed to Ketchikan now to try to pinpoint exactly what happened. 
Well, summer is not over yet. Millions of Americans are being warned about another potentially record-breaking heat wave. It's bringing higher-than-usual temperatures to the upper Midwest and Mid-Atlantic now, before reaching the southeast later this week. The extreme heat and humidity could make it feel anywhere from 105 to 115 degrees. Already this week, many schools in the Midwest dismissed classes early and called off sports practices. Several cities also opened cooling centers. Forecasters say people should get some relief later this week, though, when a cool front moves through. We have much more news for you still coming up. But first, this episode is sponsored by Honey Love. I'm guessing many of us have those certain items in our closet that we pick over everything else, right? For me, that's definitely Honey Love's Legging 2.0. They are stylish, comfortable, have great shaping, they're super soft with a cooling material, and they're convenient with pockets on the sides. Whether I'm working from home, working out, or running around town with my toddler, Honey Love's Legging 2.0 are my go-to. And when it comes to shapewear and other essentials, I choose Honey Love every time as well. In fact, they have incredibly comfortable shapewear, tanks, bras, leggings, and more for everyday support or for an upcoming special event. Our executive producer agrees, and that's the reason she chose Honey Love shapewear on her wedding day. Honey Love is not just supporting women, it's empowering women. Treat yourself to the best bras, leggings, and more on the market and save 20% at honeylove.com slash newsworthy. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash newsworthy to find your perfect fit. After your purchase, they ask you where you've heard about them, so please support our show and tell them we sent you. Elevate your comfort, elevate your style with bras, leggings, shapewear, and more that empower your lifestyle of flexibility. Okay, now back to the news. America's big tech companies are looking for new ways to find enough energy to power all the data centers they want to build. And now Meta is hoping it's found a new solution. Meta, which owns Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, reached a deal to buy geothermal energy from a startup called Sage Geosystems. The company plans to use fracking techniques like those used in the oil and gas field. But instead of drilling for fossil fuels, Sage plans to access underground reservoirs of hot water. The idea is it can be used to create energy in a turbine without greenhouse gases that are causing global warming. Google also recently partnered up with a separate geothermal startup called Fervo Energy to supply geothermal power to its data centers. Fervo is also building a plant in Utah to sell electricities to Southern California. It's expected to come online in 2026. The founder of one of the world's largest messaging apps is now in police custody over how his platform does business. Authorities in France confirmed they're questioning Telegram CEO Pavel Durov about illegal activity on the app. In case you're not familiar, Telegram has nearly a billion users worldwide. Some messages are encrypted, meaning they cannot be monitored by the company or law enforcement. Because of that, it's known for being able to help people living under restrictive governments communicate more freely. But it can also be used as a platform for criminals and extremists. And that's why Durov is now under investigation. His arrest has reignited a debate that pits free speech advocates against governments trying to crack down on the spread of illegal or false information, as well as whether actual companies should be held liable for content on their apps. Ex-owner Elon Musk is among those who have condemned Durov's arrest, saying it's a slippery slope that the future could include, quote, being executed for liking a meme. But a former Facebook executive says Telegram's issues go beyond typical content moderation since it's long been a key hub for terrorists and child predators. For now, Telegram just says its content moderation is within industry standards and is constantly improving. Authorities have not actually charged Durov with a crime yet. French law allows police to hold him in custody without charges until tomorrow. So stay tuned. The wrestling world is saying goodbye to a legend this week. WWE and WCW champion Sid Vicious has died at age 63. His son says his father battled cancer for several years. His real name was Sid Udy but he was also known as Sid Justice and Psycho Sid, among other stage names. UD first appeared for the WWF, later the WWE, in 1991. He had a famous feud with Hulk Hogan in the 90s and made a name for himself at WrestleMania. Sid Vicious wound up winning two championships, but his career effectively came to an end when he suffered a severe leg break during a televised event in 2001. Now, after his death, the WWE sent condolences to UD's family and friends. A Major League Baseball player made history this week by becoming the first player ever to play for both teams in the same game. Danny Jansen, a catcher for the Boston Red Sox, started the game with their opponent, the Toronto Blue Jays. So how is that possible? 
A few coincidences and technicalities had to line up perfectly, and they did. The game actually started way back in June, but was suspended in the second inning because of rain. Then in July, Jansen was traded from Toronto to Boston. But the game resumed yesterday where it left off. In fact, since Jansen was at bat when the original game was suspended and then was the catcher when it started back up again, he was the hitter and catcher in the same plate appearance. Jansen finished the game with one hit for the Red Sox, who lost 4-1. to one. But he walks away as part of baseball history forever. America's national parks just got their biggest gift ever. A philanthropic foundation called the Lilly Endowment awarded the National Park Foundation a $100 million grant, the largest single donation it's ever received. The National Park Foundation, or NPF, said the grant can be used for wildlife conservation as well as making critical repairs at the nation's 430 national park sites. The NPF also says it will go to create opportunities for young people to visit national parks. More than 330 million people visit the parks each year, and it costs a lot of money to maintain them. So it launched a billion-dollar fundraising effort to help, and the Lilly Endowment made the gift to support that effort. Well, that's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Trivia Tuesday, when we ask a different trivia question every week. But first, a quick break to thank our sponsor, Ibotta. It's that time of year for parents and students alike. It's back to school season. And I know this time can be a bit stressful and it gets expensive. But here's the thing. With Ibotta, you don't need to stress about the cost. You can get cash back on all your purchases. Yep, Ibotta is a free app that lets you earn cash back every time you shop. You can earn on hundreds of items from school and office supplies to groceries to clothes, even toys. In fact, the average Ibotta user earns $256 per year which, you know, could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip or flight that you've been eyeing. Simply add offers in the app, upload your receipt, and voila, the money is yours. And right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code NEWSWORTHY when you register. Go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code NEWSWORTHY. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code NEWSWORTHY. Okay, now back to Trivia Tuesday. Today's trivia question is, what sport helped launch the 24-hour convenience store? You can play along with us in our weekly roundup email that comes out each Friday. Sign up to get it at thenewsworthy.com slash email. As for last week's trivia question, what country produces the most mangoes? The answer is India. This one is not even close when it comes to mango production. India blows every other country away. The online database World Population Review says India grows more than 26 million tons of mangoes every year. That's around half of all the mangoes produced in the world. More than 2.5 million acres of land in India are dedicated to mango growing, and the fruit thrives all over the nation. Part of the reason India produces so many mangoes is it has that warm weather and tropical conditions the fruit needs to thrive. Other warm weather countries like Indonesia, Mexico, and Pakistan are also major mango growers. Well, thank you so much for listening today and making us part of your daily routine. We'll be back tomorrow with more news you need to know. Until then, have a great day.